Here's an Olympic model 447 transistor radio from 1956. Just a big AM radio that actually looks like a old tube lunchbox style portable. Okay, now the burning question. What does a small electronics manufacturer in the mid 50s do when they want to get on the transistor radio bandwagon? You know, the first transistor radios came out in late 54, so 56 was still kind of early in the game, but everybody was wanting to get on that transistor radio bandwagon. So what does, what does one do when they wish to get on that bandwagon? Well, I'll show you. What you do is you take your leftover T portables, modify them for transistors, mount the four transistors in the existing tube sockets on the whole tube chassis and solder them in place which is exactly what Olympic did here as you can see they actually made a tube portable radio that looked just like this using the same chassis and when they decided to jump on the transistor bandwagon they just had their engineers modify the, all the leftover tube portables to operate on transistors and this set still has the original uh, probably not the original but period correct 9 volt batteries this set uses two 9 volt batteries in parallel for greater battery life obviously these batteries are dead and I'll have to make up some sort of battery pack to operate this radio and speaking of operation I have no idea the operational status of this set so let's take it down to the shop and connect the power supply to it and see what happens. Okay, we're connected to the DC power supply set to 9 volts. Let's turn it on and see if we get any action at all. And it's totally dead. No static, no nothing. So this one's going to have to uh, undergo some repair. And you can see that even the case of this radio has the opening for the for a power cord to come out, which would have been used for the tube type version of this set. So yeah, they literally took a tube set and modified it for transistors and said, here's our first transistor radio. And the chassis is easy enough to remove. Just remove two screws and it slides out. Now you can get a better look at the top side of the chassis. Here's the underside of the chassis. I see four electrolytic capacitors. Everything else looks like ceramic disc. And one electrolytic on the top side of the chassis. That's a strange looking output transistor there. Here's the schematic to the radio. Just a four transistor set. First transistor is the mixer. Second transistor is IF amplifier. Then we have our detector diode, then the audio driver stage, which is transformer coupled to the audio output stage. And just for fun, I printed out the schematic on the uh, tube version of this set. There are some vast differences, but I really won't go into those now. Uh, one of these days I'm going to try to obtain the tube version of this radio, and then we'll do an in-depth comparison between the two. Okay, we've determined that there's no audio coming out of this set, except for a minor bit of crackle when I touch the power supply to the positive terminal on the battery connector. And I think I'm going to use the uh, signal tracer method to troubleshoot this set to see where the dead stage is. And basically what this is is just a high gain audio amplifier with a crystal diode installed in the test probe here and this instrument is capable of demodulating an RF signal as well as amplifying audio signals and if a stage is working then the results will be heard from the speaker here okay we're looking at the final output stage on the schematic diagram and I think the first place I'm going to check with the signal tracer is the base of the audio output transistor and see what we get. Okay, that hum you hear is just normal. 
I'm now going to touch the probe to the base of the transistor and we hear static. Now pardon me while I put the camera down and see it across the dial. See if we get any reception. Okay, so what that tells us is everything from the front end all the way up to the base of the audio output transformer is it, or, or excuse me, the audio output transistor is at least working well enough to pass a signal. So we need to concentrate our efforts on this final output stage. And I bet you that output transistor is probably our culprit. Okay, now we'll check some voltages at the output transistor. Check, checking the collector. We have negative 9 volts. That's good. Checking the base. We have negative 1.4. Checking the emitter. We have 0. Well, since we have 9 volts on the collector, that tells us that the primary of the audio output transformer is good. In fact, when I place my meter leads across the primary, I get a click from the speaker, so that tells us that the transformer and speaker are both good. Get about 1 volt on the base, which I would expect to see something there. I'd also expect to see a little bit of voltage on the emitter, which I don't see. Now I've already tested these resistors and they are they're okay, so looks like this transistor is probably the culprit. Well it looks like this transistor is the culprit. We have an open emitter base junction. And we have our meter on the diode scale, our negative lead on the base, the positive lead on emitter, and since this is a PNP transistor, resistor, we should be getting a reading. We're not. So that means this transistor is open. And just to prove my point, I'll reverse the leads. And nothing. Now let's check between base and collector. Check that junction. Positive on base. Negative on collector, nothing. Let's reverse the leads. We should get a reading. Negative on base, positive on the collector terminal. We get a reading, so that junction is okay. Now between collector and emitter, we should get infinite reading, which we do. Now we'll reverse the leads, and we should still get infinite reading. And we get infinite reading. So we have an open... This base to emitter junction is open, and this is a germanium transistor, so we'll have to look up this original part number in the NTE book and some other resources and see if we can find a suitable substitute. If not, we may have to experiment with some silicon devices, and we may have to change the value of these resistors to get the bias right. And according to NTE, the CK751 cross-references to an NTE-102, which I think is a pretty common germanium transistor. And the 102 is a PNP germanium driver and output transistor. Now, the burning question is, will the local parts house that's getting to be more worthless every day actually have this part? Well, the miracle of miracles happened today. The parts house actually had one of these. They actually had three of them in stock. That's, that's really something else. So, let's install this and see if it works. Okay, we have it temporarily installed.
Of course, it sounds like we still have more noisy transistors, probably the driver transistor. You need to hear. Your argument's not holding any more. Okay, let's make this mounting more permanent. Monday only, and you'll have 100%. And then we'll work on this hissing problem. Here's the old transistor, and they have it soldered to the heat sink. Now, I'm not too keen on soldering this new transistor to the heat sink, so hopefully I can just clip it in there. And given the low power that this audio amp is, I really don't think it's going to get that hot anyway. And this, and this Okay, there we go. Now, when that you should say work just fine. Broker, are you going to work for a particular company? And now we need to work on this hiss problem. Bunch of different companies. Okay, thinking back, we had the noise on the base of the audio output transistor when we were making those first tests when we found this transistor to be bad. And we have the noise with the volume control all the way turned down. Which leads me to believe the problem is this in this driver stage, which is based around a 2N132 transistor. So once again, we're going to use the signal generator, I mean the signal tracer. And we'll check at the collector first, which I anticipate hearing noise through the signal tracer. And then we'll go back over here to the base, where I anticipate hearing little to no noise. First, I'm going to check at the base of the driver transistor, and what I'm looking for is white noise, or interference, or whatever you choose to call it. I really am not looking for a radio station right now, so let's see what's at the base of the driver transistor. All you need to get started at one great price of $35. That's 65% off. Now, we got a ton of other items in the Okay, no white noise at the signal generator, at the signal tracer. Why do I keep calling it a signal generator? Hey, okay, so no garbage here at the base. Let's move to the collector and see what we get. Plenty noise, plenty garbage coming out. My number one suspect. A noisy germanium transistor. Maybe I should have bought the other NTE-102 that they had at the parts house. Now, just for the heck of it, I'm going to test at the output of the detector diode. If that's the way the deal went down. Now, if you don't own 100% of the house, that wouldn't be true, yeah, that's, but that's, if you owned 100%, that's what would happen. That's clear as a bell, except for the hum out of our signal planner. And you talk about what the probate taxes are in the probate... So that pretty much confirms that our mixer and IF stage and detector stage is in good operating order. And obviously our final output stage is okay. So it has to be this driver stage. Okay, I dug around and found a transistor out of a junk Magnavox stereo chassis. Who's the chance with the Islamists, uh, Barry? Who sat down one day and held their hands and took a deep breath and said... And look at there! No static! Okay, that'll about do it for part one. In part two, we'll touch up the alignment and do anything else that we might can do to help improve this perform radio's performance. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching, and part two will be up shortly.